Can you tell me your name and who your parents are? My name is Joyce Todd, and my parents were Francis and Emma Turner. Where and when were you born? I was born in Swansea, South Wales, in the UK. What did your parents do for a living? Well, my father farmed for the first 11 years that after he came to Canada. And then he joined the armed services. He was there from um, March the 2nd, and t uh, 1940, until November 1945. Where, where did you uh, grow up? I grew up on a farm along in Jemseg on Grand Lake. How many people are in your family? Well, there were seven children and my parents. How old were you when you came to New Brunswick from Wales? I was a year and three months. Did you have any other siblings at the time? Yes, my brother was four years old. Would you like to share a little bit about coming to New Brunswick? Well, it was very, very primitive for my mother and father to come there because they were used to all the modern things that we have today. And then to come here, and they lost my brother about 10 days after he arrived here. He died of pneumonia. And uh, there was uh, very, they were very lonely, and there was none of their relatives around, so you can imagine what, what it was like. What was your child, childhood like? Well, I would say it was very pleasant because uh, the farm was a great place to grow up. You know, and uh, I think that uh, we had friends that came from England just after, shortly after we did, so they were there for quite a few years. So we used to meet on Sundays and that and enjoy playing together and so forth. What was your best childhood memory? Oh gracious, I don't know. I can't think of anything. Did you have any friends, that, friends that you hung out with at the time? Not really, because we were quite a ways from the village of Dempseg, and in those days you didn't walk very far. <laughs> How did you make out with your father at war? Well, it was, you had to grow up very fast because there was a lot of responsibility. Had to, I was 13 when he left, so I had to grow up very quickly. And uh, my mother, I had to help her an awful lot. And, and uh, so there wasn't much time for um, taking, you know, taking part in things in the community or anything because there was too many things to be done at home, so. What were some of your responsibilities at home? Well, it was uh, looking after some of the younger family because uh, some were just uh, a year older and, uh, well, just doing things around uh, that had to be done, like helping bring the wood in and all that kind of stuff, and also, in those days, there was no milk at the stores, so you had to keep a cow. So that had to be taken care of, and I had to learn to do that. <laughs> um, was there any specific chores that you had? No, just anything that come up that you had to do, well, you, you did it. What did your parents do for a living? Well, my father farmed for 11 years after he came to Canada. Well, then he joined the Army, and he was away for five years. Well, when he came back after the war, he uh, worked. There was an awful lot of road work being done at that time from uh, all around that area. So he worked some with the government and some with the construction companies. He, um, well, it would be more office work than... <laughs> He didn't get out and, and uh, drive truck or anything. And uh, then uh, he worked for quite a few years at that. 
And then the last part of it, he worked with the commissioners, where, which were returned soldiers, that, and they would. He worked in Fredericton. That uh, that was about the last the last place he worked was with the commissioners in Fredericton. Can you share about your working life? Well, I just uh, the only place I worked out was at the country kitchen and uh, work shift, of course, either in the morning shift or from 3 to 11, whichever. And uh, um, oh, it was interesting. You met a lot of different people and everything. So, and uh, it wasn't you. It wasn't wait. You, it was a buffet. It wasn't. You didn't have to wait on tables or anything. So, and all the everything was prepared for you. For you, you what you had to work with it was all prepared for you by the people working in the kit in the downstairs in the basement and everything. So, it wasn't. It was really a pretty good. You know, it wasn't really hard work. Do you have any stories you would like to share about your working years? Well, I think that it was it was interesting, and uh, you met, met a lot of different people, and uh, I enjoyed working with people around and met a lot of people that from the area, and uh, I I enjoyed that. Dalton Camp had uh, the dining room rented for to entertain um, the premier and some other members, and uh, Malcolm Bricklin was one of them. And uh, so, where it was a buffet, Malcolm Bricklin, I was attending that, and he came up to the table. So. Um, I asked him if he had a Brooklyn car out there. He said, oh, yes. And so he invited me to go out and look at it. So I went out and looked at the Brooklyn. And uh, the other woman that was working there, she came out too. And I said, we left the place. <laughs> Just two of us were outside. We left the place, place where alone without anybody in there. So, But uh, anyway, he was very nice person, you know, very talkative and, and uh, but the Premier was a very, um, very quiet person. He didn't say hardly anything, but another person I met up there was uh, Milton Gregg. He and his wife were there one night and they were very, very nice people. Can you tell me about your married life? Well, I met my husband when I was I went to Jemseg to go to Fredericton with a friend of mine, and her friend at that time got my husband to drive him over from over, they both were from over here at Cambridge, drive him over, and that's where I met him. And uh, we were married a few years afterwards, and uh, he worked for Clark's, and what is the Lions Club now in Jemseg was belonged to H.B. Cowell, who was an associate dealer of Clark's. So he worked there for five years under Mr. Cowell, and then Clark's took the garage over, and he was there until I think it was probably 14 years or so, and then they sold out, and he went to Fredericton and worked up there for 12 years. Of, with Clarks. Uh, we lived in Jemseg all that time and uh, then we built our own house where it is today, not too far from the government garage over there. How old were you when your father went to war? I was 13. Do you have any stories about his war experience? Well, in the Second World War he went to England with the regiment which was eight, who was ours, 5th Armored Division. But uh, he was over there for, he wasn't there a year when he came back. And uh, he was in Borden, Ontario for the rest of the war. Was your father also in World War I? Yes, he was. 
he was working in South Africa at the time the First World War broke out. And uh, at that time, all young men of 21 had to train for a month. And uh, they belonged to the, to the, um, uh, South African Defense Force. So as soon as the war broke out, they were in the army. And so he came over from South Africa to Egypt. They were there for a while and they had a few uh, little battles there. Well, then he came over to France and he was in the Battle of the Somme in uh, 1916. And he was wounded and taken prisoner. So he was a prisoner for two and a half years uh, until the end of the war. What was life like at home when your father was away at war? Well, there was a lot of responsibility on myself and my sister, who was a couple of years younger than me. And But summertime wasn't too bad, but the winter time, it was, there was no snow plows or anything at that time, so it made it very difficult getting around. And, and uh, neighbors were very, very helpful and all that, but just the same, it was, it was very difficult, really. Can you tell us about your involvement in the community? Well, I belong to the Women's Institute, which at that time was very busy because we had 28 members. And that would involve anything that was going on in the community. The ladies usually took part in it. And like if someone got married, we would have a shower for them. And uh, also, uh, well, we'd um, work in the hall and keep that when we'd have uh, have something like a supper or something to make money so we could keep the hall in good repair. And uh, um, oh, anything that was going on, they usually took part in it. You know, that was the, the main thing in the community. Well, then I belonged to the church guild and that was uh, We'd have a meeting about every month, and we'd keep the church clean and all that. Not the Baptist church, it was the Anglican church at that time for me. So uh, we, uh, we'd, uh, every spring or fall, we'd clean the church. And, and uh, then we had a supper every fall around harvest time. That was for the, for the church. But the institute was something that you would be, have going all the time. And if, in the, when the institute, if somebody had a fire and lost a lot of things, they would usually make a quilt or something and give to them. And so it was a rather busy organization at that time. But unfortunately, now there's only eight members. And when I joined, there was 28. Joyce, you're the oldest in the family. Can you tell us about your uh, siblings? Well, Joan Fanjoy is my is next to me, and her daughter was the secretary here in the school right up until this year. Maybe you remember Shirley Simpson? That was her daughter. It's her oldest daughter. Then Joan's uh, my sister next to me. And Jean is my next sister, and she lives in Sussex, and she's retired, of course, she's, and uh, Mike was a fireman. He worked 28 years in the fire department in Oromocto, and he was the fire chief in Jemseg, and he went out one night on a call, and he had a heart attack and passed away. He was just in his, about 66, I think. Well, in uh, Pam, Pamela, she lives in Burton. She lived in Jemsig for quite a few years and then she moved to Burton because that's where her daughter lived. And she's living in Burton now. And uh, uh, Joan is also living in Oromocto. And uh, Jackie, of course, as you know, lives here in Cambridge. Joyce Todd, we would like to thank you for participating in a Legacy of History project. 
as we so much appreciate your stories you have shared with us. Well, I was very pleased to do it. I've enjoyed it very much.